Hi there, welcome to the Little Eden Podcast. This is DJ and Cindy. We'd like to thank you for joining us today. We took a break off yesterday. We were doing some work on the land. We did a video that showed some of it. We stayed there till 10.30 p.m. And shout out to Vernon yeah, oh, Miller yeah. if you need any good work done. Yeah, he's Him good. and Troy are probably the two of the best there. Yes, they are. It's been a real blessing having them, you know, come and do some of that stuff on the land. Yeah, it was great. It was really great. I mean, our driveway, because the equipment's so heavy, when they drive out with the trucks, it, it we moves. have a little hill at the beginning of the driveway, the entrance, and it the moves, Prius, it yeah. It moves in the gravel, so the Prius has been having some issues getting in and out, yeah. but we're, and we're getting it fixed up. Yeah. Today, something else interesting happened. We, we reached a video limit on the YouTube shorts. Yeah, we didn't realize there was a limit. But they, they limit you for 24 hours after, well, they restrict you to 20, uh, to wait 30, 24 hours after the limit of yeah. 30 videos. Yeah. So. Well, we don't know if that's something we can unlock later. Yeah. Right. And you guys can help us out if you want to by liking and subscribing to those. The ones who to we the channel the videos. Today. Yeah. We think we did some really good ones today, though. I was a little disappointed because there was even more when I got home I wanted to record. Yeah, it becomes something very enjoyable because you're interacting yeah. constantly outside and with the animals and uh, letting people know what we're doing so we feel like we're interacting with them. It makes a huge difference. It really does. It's been a blast. It's just been a huge fun. It's been a fun time. Um, this uh, verse that I have pulled up today is going to be Matthew chapter 13. It's parable of the wheat and the tares. Where I have um the uh, verse twenty four. So this is Matthew chapter thirteen, verse uh twenty four. Another parable put forth unto them, saying, another parable parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man, which soweth good seed in his field, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. And went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in that time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye fir together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed he is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown is the greatest among herbs, and become a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof i love that parable and it just lets us know like it's so easy when we first start to know jesus start looking at everything going in the world and go like this you know judge that person that person needs judgment that person needs judgment but everything is happening in this appointed time to the lord right letting That's right. letting the thing be in the lord's <clears throat> head till the appointed time of harvest and, and separation and let him decide then yeah and that for those that don't know when the tares, when you plant a field of wheat, tares come up, and when they're young, they look similar to the wheat. So if you go and try to pull the tares out, you can't tell the difference. You might be pulling some wheat out with it. So they usually just let let it grow because as it grows, it turns it looks different, and it's easier to tell them apart. It's kind of like uh, our spiritual growth, you know, in this world and how depending on how we grow in this world spiritually, if we deny the flesh and we d decide that, yes, I want to walk in the spirit and not the flesh, if we start to become something else. We start to become uh, an image, you know, not as God, but an image as he created us to be, Amen. to glorify him. And if we don't do that, we end up being the tares. And if you, um, when you go into, I think it's Revelation, it talks about the harvest. Yeah. And when that happens, you know, the filthy will stay filthy. The just will be stay just and people will be who they are when the harvest comes. Amen. It's, uh, and people think it's silly. It's like a thief, a thief come in and try to like, or like a 
an enemy try to come in and cast bad seed in someone's field. It's like garden garden thieves are a thing, and we we actually heard a yes. story of somebody stealing <coughs> stealing something from someone's garden, and then casting some weird seeds in their garden. Like it's like that actually happened. And so it's kind of funny. You could think some of these stories might never actually take place, but the wide scope of what human beings will do would oftentimes surprise most people. It it just blows my mind. Something else that happened today that was really interesting was the kittens that are at the land are becoming more friendly. They're they're really starting to come around. That gray one's getting really close to letting us like touch. T- I think it's a girl. Touch her and then bite Jack. He is. He is just so sweet. I think he is just a prissy little boy. He's he's really coming around. I think he's gotten a lot more comfortable in Zoro. Zoro's always been comfortable. He's just a big old pudding bear. I can't wait till we can get them in a more secure place. It's been really stressful not being able to bring them home, but we just don't want to leave that gray one by, by herself because if we take off with her brothers, then she's going to be scared of us. And so... But that's been another kind of interesting thing that's happened. But I guess we'll go ahead and transition on into the news here. One of the crazy, I guess, the breaking news, the main news article for the night. Marjorie Taylor Greene, her house was swatted, her uh, Rome residence in, in uh, Georgia. I thought that was pretty crazy how how more bold political attacks are becoming. It's just, it seems to be just commonplace now for people to go after their political rivals and petty ways like this it's become a nation of chaos and do as thou wilt type of mentality Mm -hmm. which is um you know steeped in if you're if you understand the spiritual battle it is steeped in the battle in the side of the enemy and it goes back to the wheats and tares but in, in a lot of ways but this is what the norm is becoming you know you look at what happened to trump you look at what happened to Marjorie Taylor? I mean, there's people people that who try to speak the truth. They get things like this happen to them. Temple it happened to him. Yeah, it did. You know, and I mean, and people. It might seem funny to some people, but people have died from this. I don't mean I don't know who. Me personally, I don't think it's funny, but I know that that trolls, you know, think it's funny. But people have died from this. You know, it's a serious thing. You know, a lot of times the police officers will barge in and they just might not fully understand the situation because they're not a prominent figure like a Marjorie Taylor Greene or a Tim Pool where they have a lot of people, a lot of cameras, a lot of, you know, security in that way. Where normal people, when they get swatted, police just think it's like a regular kind of normal thing and they just come in and do business and sometimes people die. Yeah, because the way they're hiring now... I mean, I used to know, I, I've never been fond of uh, law enforcement officers because my experience has not been good with them. <clears throat> I've not seen either. them do, you know, get involved in crime and um, become a part of it. But I did know a few police officers that were very lawful and they felt passionate about protecting the civilians. Well, that doesn't even exist anymore, hardly. There, I mean... It's always been a few. I guess there's, it's possible that there are still a few. I don't want to put any, you know, anybody's life in jeopardy on that regard. It's not a, either you hate or love them. It's just that, again, by each individual, you have to be have discernment with each individual, not based on their beliefs, not, you know, as far as religious beliefs, political beliefs, or anything like that. But each one of us should, you know, be very careful to have integrity during this era of things. We need to make sure that we understand integrity, ethics, and morals. And that is your base. That's your ground. Your grounding. Yeah, I, I, it really is. <clears throat> I mean, without morals, society falls apart. Without Jesus, there's no morals. Exactly. Right, and what have they done? They removed them. Yep. And any country that has done that, it, it you will see despair. You're starting to see it in the United States. You see decadence, depravity, decay. And, and then that, you see also the famine, pestilence, plague. plague. War, I mean, war has been abound for a while now, but, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's going to come on any. If you look at history and you, if, if you understand history, you know that a lot of historians 
um, archaeologists will always go back to the Bible. Yeah, they, they do cross reference from the Bible pretty. I mean, pretty regularly. Yeah, because it's consistent. Yeah. Even to them, even if you don't believe it, it's consistent. Yeah, it is. So you can see the effects of these same things that happen over and over and over. And the one th difference is, is that the nations that repented received mercy. Amen. And the nations that repented and stayed in him received, get, received mercy. Yeah. The, you know, Nineveh repented for a time. But they turned right back and, you know, they yeah. were done away with. There's Not no even more... a couple hundred years later, they, they did the same thing and then they were destroyed. There is no longer a Nineveh. <laughs> it's called right. by another name. And he will use your enemies uh, to destroy you there, know, your, your nation. There's another really interesting <clears throat> story that I, I heard. Um, California, they signed this initiative. It seems like it's going to pass where they're trying to put forth initiatives to... Um, stop the sale of new gas cars by 2035 and it's well and the you that's funny you brought this up because i read an article that they're already doing that in uk they're they're no longer lending money for uh cars that run on fuel yeah and a lot of people don't have the cash <coughs> on hand to buy a newer car no and a lot of people need a newer car to do a lot of driving if it's for you know work yeah, and nobody wants to be in debt right now. No, no. So, I mean, why are they forcing? This is, you got to wonder, uh, with, you would think that if this uh, pandemic was something that was not even, that was caught us by surprise, you would think <clears throat> that they would do a lot more to help people, yeah. not by giving them these little bits of checks and that really do nothing, but would have helped with mortgage, would have helped like all across the board, medical, the expenses that they had were misused in a way to further tighten and put people in bondage yeah. financially. Yeah. It wasn't used to relieve anyone. No, it wasn't. So, therefore, I believe that it was intentional. Yeah, I think it was, too. I think it was very much intentional. <coughs> they, they, they really like putting a pressure on the, on the you know, lower to middle class people. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're in a vice. You go to the grocery store and you have to choose what you're going to be able to feed yourself if you can even do that between that and fuel. Yeah, and then it's a struggle. It's like even if I spend money on buying food, like the food... You don't oftentimes trust it. You're always worried to a degree how safe is this food. With everything that's gone on, how many recalls have there been? How many contaminants have there been? I so mean, they're many. they're scaring people. Like It's almost like they're herding people into a direction they want them to go. Yeah. And, and I think that's been the case for quite some time. Yeah, it has. I, I agree. That's 100% accurate. Uh, there's the next article. All right, like the whole disparaging between people that have a lot of money, people who don't. Uh, so this article where Kim Kardashian, Kevin Hart, and Sylvester Stallone are accused of massive water waste, and I'm, it's not probably just them. You know what I mean? It's probably a lot of all the celebrities, and it's and it's like they don't have to be careful because those fines they just pay them, and they can keep using water. And everybody else has to, you know, struggle to even have enough water to do farming. You know, farmers don't even have enough water to farm in California. But celebrities and golf courses, they can have all the water they want and use it all up and have no compassion for other people. It bothers me personally. I don't think that there, I think once people become that level of, um, I guess you could call it success or in that status quo. Yeah. I think that they are so accustomed to their little bubbles yeah. that they don't realize like the, what everybody else is going through or they don't care. You know, it's just the way the world is. Yeah. And it's not just them. I mean, I mean, we live in America, of course, none of us are perfect about wasting. Cause I mean, that is kind of what a lot of us grew up in. Some of us are slowly transitioning, but I, I remember growing up, my mom was like, because, you know, we, we never, we grew up poor, you know, don't waste that food. There's somebody, there's a kid, a starving kid in Africa. Yeah, I heard that many times. This kind of would love to when eat you're that. a kid, you're like, just send it to the man. Yeah, you <laughs> mail it to him. And it's like, and it's not even that everybody in Africa is that way. I mean, there's plenty of starving kids here that would enjoy that food. I mean, but well. that's a good analogy because 
a child wouldn't understand, but you would expect an adult to. Yeah. 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 Someone of that level that has traveled the world, right? Your Kim Kardashian, your Kevin Hart, your Sylvester Stallone. If they really need to use water like that, they have multiple homes. They don't have to stay there. And I don't think it's just them. I no. Mean, I mean, it's it's not it's it's every, it's the golf courses, it's everything out there. It's all this the one percent that's uh, wasting. Yeah, and it's like they all have homes all over the world, and yet they're choosing to waste the water there. Like yeah. go other places, spend time during the drought season, come back when the when the wet season is there. You know, give it, give it a break. But I I don't know. Well, you can't, the world is their oyster. Yeah, exactly. Apparently. But you know, their treasures in this world. Yeah. You know, the, the next life, they're going to have to answer for those things. And again, if, I mean, we are, we we still pray for people, even though it's difficult sometimes, especially when you know that they're purposely destroying things. You know, the, you just have to pray because if their heart does change it, you know, not just about the water, but mm -hmm. about the political climate in our, in our world and the economic situation, if you pray and just beg the Lord, you know, to help them, if one of them changes, if their heart changes, it'd be, it would have been worth it. Yeah. Cause then they would become your brother or sister in Christ. They would no longer be in sin. Yeah, you're right. You're and it's right. hard to think that way all the time because it's, it's just hard. It makes you kind of angry when you see what people, they're doing. People acting that way. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. But you have to have grace cause we got, we, I know I, I'm surprised that, you know, there's grace for me. Amen. That's true. Give it as freely as we've been given. That's right. Uh, the next article I have up, you might like this. Well, you, don't, you won't like it, but I know you'll be able to go off on it. Pre-bunking <clears throat> shows promise and fight against information. So what they're talking about is like teaching people to recognize certain keywords or things that people might say that they claim is misinformation. And the things that it noted was like very passionate. Um, it makes the accusations compared to things that are seemingly unrelated as is, as if they are, you know, all these things that like are kind of part of any kind of uh, discussion over some topics that they would deem misinformation because there's you know the whole thing of an analogy. That's the reason it's a literary device, and that is kind of what they're saying is a source of misinformation and analogy. The very nature of it is comparing two things that seem unrelated on the surface, but have some un un uh, unknown underlying connection. And that, you know, I mean, the parables, right? The, yeah. It talks about, the, we just, we read you a parable. Yeah. It's kind of why I wanted to pull one off. We read you guys a parable. That very much is what they would deem misinformation. They're comparing two things that are seemingly unrelated that actually are. And these are like the spiritual nature of how we deal with the world and farming, you know, and like And see that that is um a very <clears throat> deep conversation for me because it, you believing comes by from from hearing the word of God being spoken. That's where believing comes from. Yeah. And the the word of God is well known, you know, amongst the and what we call the enemy in the spiritual battle. Yes. Right. And so whether these people realize it or not, whether they believe it or not, because of the spiritual battle and, and our war is not in flesh with flesh and blood is with spiritual uh, is a spiritual battle with uh, principalities and high places. Right. Yeah. And entities. So when you think about that and they understand the power of God's word by manipulating and using language as a weapon, they can remove people from understanding those parables yeah. by brainwashing them to I, only think a certain way. And they're doing it through two minute videos. Like, yeah, because they know tutorial. everybody's attention span is not there anymore. And it probably in my, I got it. It doesn't show the videos. It doesn't really describe how they get the point across, but they talk about teaching people those things. In two minute videos, I would imagine it's animated and seems very authoritative in the way it's presented. And, you know, that provides an air of, well, I hate to use the same word twice, authority. If they present themselves that way, they, then they're perceived that way. I don't like it. 
it's going to be all over the place. We're talking about it now. Give it a couple of weeks. They're talking about how successful it is in these trial runs. Uh, I don't think you won't be affected by watching them because I've seen uh, my own family member go from, you know, um, not being against and making a stand against everything that is happening now they felt was unjust just a few decades ago. And as time went on, as they opened their ears, allowed things to come in, their thoughts, they now are the opposite of what they were just a few decades ago. Yeah, to where the lens of through which they perceive scripture or the word is is skewed from what it was before and it was yes. gradually is gradually moved, you know, that they changed that perspective over time so that they, when they looked into the scripture, they saw something different. Right. And then that's what the point of parables and things like that are, is that if your heart is not in the right place, you're not going to understand those things. No, you're not. And so they're, they're doing what they can in a subversive influence kind of way to encourage people to delve into a heart state that will bind them to will the heart in their heart yeah against god's word yeah because the enemy doesn't want you to be saved yeah he 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 wants you to not be in god's presence amen you know he he's a lion waiting to devour yeah right? those that stand steadfast in the faith yeah and it's so like, if you follow Jesus, be prepared to be attacked daily. Those that stand steadfast in the faith. Yeah. Yeah. Because like those, this, yeah. That's, yeah. That's somebody who's firm. <clears throat> that's you know, right. You know, that's the devil is going. Imagine after, the 300 movie. If you need a visual, uh, yeah. you know, being steadfast, yeah. you know, like, you know, part being in a family, it's not, you know, backing off like that kind of, you know, but in a spiritual way towards God, the devil wants to take those people out because he knows those are, those are the people that are, the most likely to evangelize spread. And, That's right. You know, he's going to leave. If you guys are in sin, he's going to leave you alone because you're fine where you're at. Yeah. He's going to have, yeah. His, he's going to have coming his, after uh, the people who believe. Yeah. He'll have his time with you once you leave this world. Yeah. You know, that's, that's when he gets to do what he wants with you. But, those that belong to the to the father, he wants to get every bit of his hatred out on you while he can before you're out of his reach. That's right. And, and, you know, God, God allows certain things, but he, he nothing can pluck us from his hand once we're there. Amen. And as long as we're walking in the gospel or with the gospel or through Jesus Christ with the Lord, you know, following him as best we know how, you know, we, we will not have protection if that if that's not where we're at. Amen. And then you'll be just like in the flood. They really, literally... I mean, kind of like no Noah's flood, right? Me and Jody were talking about that today. We were we were talking about the ark. He was like, you know, he's like, I keep thinking about the ark and, and you know the ark of the covenant, and then the ark that Noah was in, and we were talking about like the covering, as like you know, we were talking about arches, you know, and that too, like the an archway is a type of ark, and it's like that covers something. It 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 shields it. It keeps it safe. Just like Noah's kept safe, we're covered in Christ, and we were we were both going back and forth about that, like talking about it, it was a really interesting conversation. Yeah, Jesus is the ark. Yeah, you don't get on it. You you're gonna be swept away in what's going on around you. And we were talking about being provided for, and it's like Noah had Noah and his family had just what they needed to eat, and all the animals had what they need he needed to eat. And I was I was like I took it <clears throat> took a step further. It's like they may have had just what they needed to eat, but even if everyone else had joined on that he warned. They yeah. don't come. They would have had enough for all of them. Yeah, you know? just like the wilderness journey with, with Moses. Amen. They had what they needed. Amen. That God doesn't want us to hoard. No. He he. You know. Yes, Joseph prepared because there was a dream that came and he was told, what was going to happen. He was given foresight to prepare. Yep. There's a time to prepare and the time just to lean on the Lord because, um, from what we understand from the last days which we are living in ever since Jesus was resurrected. Yeah. We believe we've been living in the last days since then. Yeah. But it's like labor pains, yes. birthing pains. If you know anything about labor, the contractions start further apart. Yeah. Right. And then as time comes to an end, it just gets quicker and quicker and quicker until the baby's born. Yeah. Well, we're in the last part of that labor. Yeah. I, and, and when that happens, we know, from what we've been told uh, through scripture that 
game may might come to where you better not go down and get your coat if you're on top of the house or you know if you're doing yeah. something don't go back and pick, get did, things yeah did you use just it, move the, the jews that knew jesus christ and followed him and believed him when the romans came to just take down jerusalem yeah they they knew that they heard that parable and listened to it that's they, right they didn't stay around and history does repeat itself and that is the labor pains amen. right and it just it quickens amen and so Yes, it has been the end time since then. So I got a good news article. To me, it's good news. I thought this was hilarious. It made me laugh today when I read it. Because, uh, well, we'll just read it. AI rapper Effin Mecca dropped by Capitol Records over racial stereotyping. So a couple, uh, it was about a week ago. Yeah, it was a week ago. I was reading, I read an article talking about this AI rapper that was signed to a record label. And I was like, that's so dumb. I was like, that's just dumb. That's the dumbest thing I've heard. Why do they have to sign? Why even have to sign to a record label? It's already making music. Like, we didn't make money. I don't understand. They are trying to get people into <coughs> transhumanism stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's, I think it's funny about the racial stereotyping. Why can't the AI identify? Yeah, exactly. As black, right? It could or Latino. It or... Could, well, like, yeah, Latino, but it could, if it was Asian white. It'd been fine and then it could have been male female it could have been a dog it could have been a cat it could have been some different form of human and anime form or whatever it could have been anything other than like the equal quote unquote marginalized couple of marginalized races and the, the whole company had to like release apologies apparently there were videos that they like this they, they had to do that like in the context of hey, it's exploiting black culture, black suffering. Like, there's somewhere it gets, like... A How is that even related? Well, there's a video where he gets, uh, I think, attacked by a police officer, like, digitally, right? You know what I mean? You it's, mean, like, every video that we've seen about rap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know, I know. But it's just, like... It's like they create a digital puppet... To exploit the feeling of that, hoping that people that identify with something that looks like that, you know what I mean? I don't know who identifies with that, honestly. <clears throat> if anyone identifies with this, really weird. Like, personally, like, it's that, you know, it's just odd. I wouldn't even say it's creepy because that would imply some kind of fear. It's just, it's just not, it's silliness. But, like, they, they think that. It, doing those things takes away from artists that are experiencing that from making content that exploits that experience for money. <laughs> you know oh what I mean? Gosh. You get know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's okay if you experienced it to exploit it for money or for whatever reason, put it in videos, glorify it all sorts of ways. <clears throat> but if you're an AI, you know, apparently that's not okay. I don't know. It's... These ideologies are really causing a lot of destruction. You yeah. know, can't we just all agree we're human beings made, well, made in God's image? This is one good destruction. At least it took out a silly, like, something that is truly silly. It is. It's not even real. Yeah. I mean, it may think it's real. You know? Well, apparently it's just like a lot of it is not, it's not like one of the more very complicated AIs. It's it's put in a lot. It's put into it. Context or certain things in them. Certain rhythms and things like that it generates or the beats it might generate to some degree. But it it it's still it's still got strings. The they say that watch everybody start getting teal braiding hair and teal contacts and nose rings and well, I think most things of prominence because it's already got like millions <laughs> of followers. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I might well, be. Well, people wrong. are gonna start dressing like that. Oh yeah, I mean, it, I bet I think it's so dumb. Is this is this? I guess that algorithmically somehow that's deemed as what people might want. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, I don't see it, but I guess maybe that's because I'm a little different than most people, I guess. Maybe the general populace. I mean, we did sell a lot of a lot of stuff like that at the store. Like that that hair, that braiding hair. Yeah. You know, the same color and so 
I could maybe see that actually happening. I just... Well, any, anything... It seems like there is no end I can see to this, all this stuff going on. No, it's it definitely is, going to, like, what they call singularity emerging a flesh and machine. You're not doing it? No. I'm definitely not doing it. And Elon Musk is apparently very upset with the slow progress of the neural God willing, league. I'm not doing it. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just say that because... You know, somebody might hold you down and put a needle in the back of your head. <laughs> you know, what can you do? Like, I've always thought... I mean, you, I, from what I understand, New York has um, some type of law that allows them to force you to be treated. Come out of her, my children. Exactly. Well, I mean, <clears throat> we take that pretty literally. I mean, if you if you don't live, if you're in America, don't live in a state that, that makes those kind of laws, and then yeah. if it gets to the point where there's no state, then you might consider expatriate being expatriate. Yeah. Well, the, according uh, to some language I saw, is that they would consider us the discontents. <laughs> there would be contents and discontents. <laughs> In yeah. this article, that's just the language they made up. But as we know, they're very good about changing wording. You know, they they love using uh, a switch up technique to change. You know, something to it's what from speed. what it means to what it doesn't mean. Double speed, yeah, like in nineteen eighty four, right? The yeah, exactly. Of truth is all about lies, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, words are being used as weapons today. I mean, it's, it's changing people's thoughts about everything. Yeah. And people want to belong. I still can't, so, I still can't believe they actually, like, our government thought it was a good idea to float the idea of a, of a program or an organization <laughs> called the Ministry of Truth. Like, just like they read 1984, it's like, this is a great idea, let's do it. <laughs> It blows my mind. Uh, yeah. But anyway. Well, uh, we appreciate everybody that, that comes and join us on the podcast. Every, you know, whoever does, listens through, you know, what our day has been like and some scripture and the news. Hopefully that helps somebody out. You know, we, we really like to reflect on the Lord a lot in our lives. Well, if we didn't, we wouldn't be able to see clearly. No. We would would be probably in despair, depression. You know, um, well, I worry anyway. I imagine I would be just stressed out to the max every day if I if we didn't have Christ in our lives. Amen. I mean, because we know there's hope there. It's so difficult without them. Yeah, you know? absolutely. The burdens that come, all the burdens you had in your life, they come right back when you step away from them. They do. And it's it's not a pleasant experience. Staying close with him is the most important part. Yeah, no matter what suffering you're going through, is always going to be a lighter burden with the Lord because he's going to carry it for you. Amen. And it's going to be for his glory. And just be remember to be thankful, you know, about everything. Just pick up your cross and carry yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Like we listened to a guy earlier on his five-minute sermon. It You know, if someone cuts you off in the road, be, just be glad that you're... You didn't get in an accident. Yeah. Be glad that the Lord protected you. Yeah, definitely. Be glad that, and because if you anger and sin, who knows, you might get shot. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, we talk about this pretty often. I mean, who wants to go in that way? Nobody. Not you know, the last thing you do is you're angry and, you know, flip somebody off or whatever, and then all of a sudden your life is taken and you're before the judge. Yeah. Right? That's a difficult way to go. It's like, yeah. how, you know, you left the earth this way. Just don't let yourself be overcome. You know, that's that's the key, I guess, is to, is to just stay in faith with him because when you do, you won't be. You'll have on the armor of God, right? That's you, right. You know, the shield of faith that will guide, uh, guard you against the fiery darts of the enemy. You'll have the boots of peace that will set you about his way. you have the breastplate of righteousness. The sandals of the gospel. Well, stand, I, steadfast, right? In I, the gospel. Yeah, yeah. And the belt of truth. Descent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sandals of peace, right? Steadfastness. Look it up. 
Okay, dog. A helmet, a helmet <clears throat> salvation, breast Why don't you put it up on there so people can see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They look at it. Yeah, yeah. Breastplate of righteousness and the uh, um, sword of the word, and which is truth, and then the helmet of salvation. <clears throat> Make sure I don't stop this. Just thing. put on the full armor of God so that you can take. Your stand against the devil's schemes, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand at your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth, buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So is the gospel and peace. <laughs> it's both. It is. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And then pray in the spirit on all occasions and with prayers and requests. Mm -hmm. And then with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the, all the Lord's people. And we do pray for everyone. Amen. Especially our brothers and sisters in Christ and their families, your loved ones, those that don't even know the Lord yet. We pray that they will. So, I mean, it's very important. And if you don't know this, you, you ought to. Even if you're an unbeliever, I know that there's probably some kind of pain. I mean, this life is full of of unexpected things out of your control, painful moments that you have lo losing loved ones. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you never know when it might pop up on you. Like I lost my mother, and you know, at a very young age, you lost your brother unexpectedly. You know, like you never know when those things might crop up on you. And then being a farmer, you know, animals losing animals, you don't expect to lose. I mean, those yeah. are really sad and, and tragic moments. We we're watching uh, some YouTubers called Doug and Stacy that you guys might want to check out. They have a lot of informative things about um, storing your food that you grow and just living off, you know, the grid and everything. They're very interesting uh, people. But, um, yeah, they recently lost uh, one of their rams that they had for 11 years. It was very it's not sad. fun. It's not fun going through all that. No, and especially if you've had it for that long, too. I mean, you're bound to be super close with that animal. Yeah. Even if it's a stubborn animal you probably have problems with every year out of the 10 or 11 years you had them, you're still going to love that animal a certain way. Like, like We learned there's exceptional ones that are super intelligent and aware. Yeah, goats. I've learned that with goats. And, I mean, all animals. I mean, pick the range all the ones you guys see on the videos I mean, they all have special personalities they do i mean they like it's being, because we interact with them and they like being filmed too which is really cool there there's little show animals there's a couple of ducks that do have some deficiencies but we know what it is and we're going to try to take care of that yeah we're trying we're trying to uh didn't mean to laugh that was just funny that video yeah the girl. well yeah the, the bottle popping yeah. right <laughs> But, you know, it. you have things that happen where you learn as you go along. You just try to be the best steward you can be. Don't give up. Yeah, don't. Cause, just I mean, lean on the Lord when you feel like giving up. Lean on Him. Because uh, people need to realize, like, think about human history. Humans have never been perfect farmers or hu animal husbandry. They used to be a lot better at it than we are currently because they all did it. But now not many people do it, so... It's going to be a trial and error process, but don't, like you said, don't get discouraged. No. Yeah, just don't give up and keep on going through the Lord. You can do anything. Nothing's impossible. Amen. Well, we'll let you guys go, and we'll hope you enjoy the rest of your evening or day or whatever you're doing after watching this. Hopefully, hopefully it's been a joy. It's been a joy for us to make it. Everything we've been doing has been a joy to do on this yeah. channel. Get your voice out there and... Let people see what real people do. Yeah, because that's you know, makes not a what difference. scripted people do. Yeah, because the more you script things, it is so detached from reality. You know, to catch things in the natural state, it's what we all enjoy and can relate to. And it's that's the hard thing is once you put a camera on everybody, 
that everything changes it's like the observer what is it i don't want to get i want to get down into the rat hole yeah we, but, we gotta let him go <laughs> you know, thank you guys and um if you haven't please like share subscribe and if you have anything you want to let us know leave a comment and then like, the emails down in the description if you have any prayer requests just let us know and we'll be there for you and you know best way we know how it's usually is again prayer that's yeah. right yeah not like that penguin that's not the kind of prayer we do yeah that's what happens in the world <laughs> <laughs> well we want to thank you guys and have a blessed day bye